Let's learn how to create a terrain like this. It's an infinite terrain. It is randomly generated. It uses thalassophobia for the artwork and map magic to generate the actual terrain and plant it. There are an infinite number of scenes that will come out of this system. So let's see how it works. So here's the completed scene, and you can see there's a lot going on in here. But it's all generated by map magic. nothing is placed by hand. The graphs are actually pretty complex, but I do use a lot of functions. And that means I can break them down into sub-graphs. And here you see another graph. This one is for the hard coral, and you can see that this is also very complex. But there's no functions in here, this is just a normal map magic graph that we have. And I have a whole bunch of these for the soft off corals, for the rocks, for the grasses, for the kelp, and then for the fish and the sharks and so on. So let's have a look at how we build the top level graph. Let's create a new scene. We'll call that making of thalassophobia or something like that. Open the scene up. We won't save those other settings. And now we have an empty scene. So inside here, we're going to add a map magic object and that will enable us to create a graph. So let's do that. Let's create a folder for our graphs because we're going to create multiple of them. So we'll call that graphs. Okay. And inside there, we'll create a, a new graph, map magic graph. We'll start with a simple graph. It's handy to have those nodes in. We'll call this main. And now we can attach that to our map magic object. So we just drag it in over here. And just like that, we have a basic terrain, although it doesn't look much like a seabed. So let's fix that. So here's the graph as it was created by map magic. And what we're going to do is we're going to play with the noise here a little bit. Let's reduce the intensity significantly so that we get much more kind of undulations. This is the sea. It's been beat by the water for a long time. So we're not going to have massive changes in the seabed here. Let's reduce the detail here and that should look pretty good let's fly in there a little bit and let's see what it looks like okay yeah nice undulations you could imagine that kind of thing happening on the seabed we're going to remove the erosion node we don't really need that in this environment that's more with water washing down rather than over and wearing down so let's reconnect that up to the height and now we want a portal because we're going to use this height map in other areas of the map. And I like to keep things fully separated. I find it makes it easier to manage later. So we're going to call that portal the height map. And then we're done. We're ready to move on to texturing. And this is what it's going to look like at the end of this next few minutes section. Um, pretty basic texturing right now, but we have some sand in here. We have some initial rocks. After this section, we're going to add in some actual physical rocks and enhance this texturing. So to get our texturing going, we're going to need to set up our height map to be an input into the section of the graph that's texturing. Now, this might seem a bit strange given that it's immediately above, but uh, trust me, later on, separating it out like this is going to be helpful. So we need to bring the height map exit portal and also the textures mode. Now we also need to tell it to use the right shader for the terrain because this is a stylized terrain and there's a special shader that comes with the distant land stuff. It's called stylized terrain and it's right there. So we just click on that and we're ready to go now. So let's create a folder and we're going to call that folder te terrain layers. And inside there we're going to create our first terrain layer and we'll call that um, stylized sand. Okay, great. So we're going to use text one. That again is a texture that comes with the uh, asset pack there. As you can see, it comes from distant lands. So using text one, and we'll use the normal for text one. Now, if you watch carefully, I actually pick the wrong texture here. I'm going to correct that very shortly, but make sure you pick the normal. If you're following along, we'll, we'll fix it in a minute. Don't worry. So we'll change the color here to kind of an orangey, yellowy, sandy kind of color. And now we can get to apply that into our textures. So the base layer is going to be that texture layer we just created. We drag it in over here. And as you can see in the corner of the uh, scene there, you can see that the sand has been applied. Next up, we want to provide a rock layer. So let's duplicate that layer and we'll call this stylized rock. We'll change the color of that to uh, a nice dark gray something like that. 
And oh yeah, this is where I noticed that I had the wrong layer in for my normals. So go in there, search for text one, and you just have to go for the normal layer, correct that over in the sand too. And now we can go in and we can do what we were trying to do, which is to apply that layer into our textures node. So we'll create a new layer, we'll drop our rocks layer into that, and now we need to tell it where to appear. So we're going to use a slope node and we're going to make this appear only on some of the steeper slopes. So let's just wire that up to that layer and then uh, put the preview on. And let's, let's just move the scene view a little so we can see what's happening. It'll apply it at the lightest colors. So we're gonna reduce this down to maybe 20, and there you go. You see we're getting a few patches. That might be a little bit too few. Let's uh, increase the slope a little bit to find some uh, a few more bits and pieces. There we go, that's looking a little better. Now normally it would blend in more, but we're using a stylized uh, terrain uh, here, and so it doesn't blend in in any particular way. It's a bit dark though, so let's make it a little lighter there we go and we'll also make the sand a little lighter to make that a bit more yellow and then we're done okay at the end of this section this is what we're going to have so we've added some actual objects in here these rocks and we've added some additional texturing around the rocks as well so we're starting to bring some interest into the scene and this is what we're going to have at the end of this video. The next video, we'll start putting the vegetation in. So now what I want to do is I want to add some rocks into this world. So it's going to be the first set of objects that we create. And I'm going to do this with a function. So let's add in a function. And this function is going to be used to add not just the rocks, but later some debris. So let's create a new graph. And we're going to call that rocks and debris. And make that graph the graph that drives the function. So let's open up that graph. And we're going to start off here by creating a scatter node. And that's going to define where these rocks are going to land to start with. And we'll need an object node to output the rocks themselves. Once we have that, we can wire in some rocks. So we'll just pick one for now just to get going. So we'll go with rock one and connect the scatter node up to that object. And we've got rocks in our scene. Excellent. But that's not really how we want it. We want the rocks to have a bit more variety than that. We also want to control where they live. So let's add some variety first. Let's add a spread node in. And using the spread node, we can make these rocks appear in groups. Uh, so where each one rock appears, we'll have multiple rocks and we'll spread them out a little bit over an area. And what that will do is it'll create effectively new looking rocks. These being low poly, they merge in well together as you can see here. That's actually two or maybe three rocks and there's a, another a group of rocks there. So next I want to stop these rocks appearing on the slopes. There's one in the background there that looks like it wouldn't really stop there. So let's put a mask in here and we're going to mask out some of these rocks. In order to do that, we're going to need the height map coming in here. So we need an input to the function, which is going to be from our map nodes. And that input is going to be called our heights. Now we're going to also need a slope node and that will select the areas that we want to mask out. So let's make a little bit of space up here and connect our slope node into the mask and our height input into the slope. Actually, let's disconnect the slope so that we can see what we're going to do here. There's a bug there. Sometimes you need to just adjust something in order to make the preview appear. And we're not getting any preview here yet because we haven't actually put any input into this function. So let's open up the main graph and just wire in the heights from the noise into our function. And now when we go back to our rocks and debris, we can see that we have a preview and we are indeed going to mask out some of those rocks. Excellent. So now what I want to do is actually have the rocks appearing more in the cavities in this terrain, which is what would actually happen if you think about it. The weight of the rock and everything would destroy what's underneath it. The water would wash it away. So this cavity here is a good candidate. So let's go into our graph again and let's add in a cavity mask, a cavity node rather. And we'll put our height maps into that. And we'll put a preview on that, adjust something so we can see the preview. There we go. What we're looking for is the concave areas. So let's adjust these settings a bit so we can see plenty of nice bright areas to select. 
So now we want to blend these two values together. So we'll create a blend node. We'll drop in the cavity values as the base and then the slope as a multiplier on top of that. And that will allow us to mask out in all areas except the cavities and some of the slopes. So let's increase the density of our scatter node and you can see that in effect now. We have a lot more rocks in the cavities on this level. Fantastic. We'll just tweak the slope values a little bit, just, just do some fine tuning here. And then finally, we'll reduce the scatter down, just reduce the number of rocks that we're getting. That looks great now. Now, all of the rocks are the exact same size and with the same rotation. So let's add an adjust node in before we place these rocks. And we'll put some randomization in here. So we'll randomize the rotation from 0 to 360, and we'll randomize the size from something like 0 0.5 to maybe 1.3. Let's add some more variety by having more kinds of rocks. So there are five rocks in this pack. So let's add in five slots and drag those rocks in. Okay, they're a little bit tightly clustered. So let's put some more space between them and take a closer look. Yep, they're looking pretty good. But as ever, we can make things look better. At the moment, these rocks are not flattening the ground underneath them, which is not really what would happen in reality. So let's fix that. Let's add in a flatten node into our graph here. And once we have that, we'll wire up our adjust node so it knows where to flatten and our input height map will also be an input to that node. And then we'll need to set some default settings here. We're going to fine tune these a little bit in a moment, but set something that might work for now. And then we're going to create a function output from this node so that we can go back to the main node and adjust the height map accordingly. Now that that's all wired up, we can play with the values on that flatten node to get something that looks okay. And you can see the effects coming in on the left-hand side there. Um, so we're just tweaking, great procedural tool. You can just muck about until you've got it right. And now that we have that right, it is time to improve the texturing. I want to have the rock texture underneath these rocks. So it's not just sand everywhere, but we have rock around the rocks. Makes sense, right? So the way we're going to do that is with a stroke node. So let's add in a stroke node here. And the input to that can be the spread node. It could be the adjust node as well. Doesn't really matter. Let's just get this preview out of the way. Um, okay, there's a bit of a bug that if things are overlapping like this, you can't actually move them. So you just have to jiggle around until you find it actually working. There we go. Now we can wire up that stroke node. So let's put that into the spread and let's get the preview on so we can see what we're doing here. And we're going to play with the values until we see the uh, stroke appearing underneath these rocks. We're going to have to make it quite large, I think, to make that happen. Let's see here. Put some noise in around the outside as well. Come on, where is it? Okay, the preview was broken. That happens quite a bit. You have to turn it off and turn it back on again, but we're still gonna to wanna to make it larger. And that's beginning to look okay now. So in order to use that in our texturing, we need to make this an output of the function. And we'll make that output something like uh, text rock. And if we go up to our main graph now, we can take that output from the function put it into a portal. Again, I do this um, because it makes it easy to reuse it elsewhere. So I'm gonna put it into an enter portal and we'll call that text rock as well. And now I can go down to where I'm doing my texturing and I can put a blend node in here. And I can put the text rock into that and add the values from text rock to the ones that I already have for slope, which will give me rock underneath my rocks. Perfect. Okay, and here we see again the final result, a different part of it. We have some lovely fish swimming around inside of the coral. We've got some kelp and bubbles and grass. A lot more work to do yet as this shark comes over us, casting a shadow down. But we will get on with that in the next video. See you soon.